Good evening, everyone. To my Muslim brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And to my Christian family, I extend to you my heartfelt greetings during the season for rejoicing. New Awakenings welcomes you with peace and in the spirit of strengthening bonds of brotherhood as we are all one fat, we are all the family of God. I open the program by saying that Muslims love Jesus, son of Mary. May peace and blessings be upon them both, the spirit of God. And it brings us great joy to be able to share this love with you all. Our program tonight consists of the following. Hafiz Shafiq Abdul Sabor will begin the evening with, he'll, he'll open the event with beautiful recitation of a selection of ayat or lines of Holy Quran from Surat Al Ali Imran. Our guest speakers tonight. First and foremost will be Kamal Shakir, founding member of Holy Islamville in York, South Carolina, and co-author of The Right Path to God Almighty. Brother Kamal Shakir will be speaking on the topic of what Muslims believe about the blessed Jesus, son of Mary. Our next guest speaker will be Dr. Jawaria Abdullah Shaheed, education consultant and interfaith speaker. She will be speaking on the topic of the noble character of Jesus, son of Mary, the blessed word of God, and how we can incorporate his way in our daily lives. And our third and final guest speaker will be Ustaz Shuaib Ahmed, Muslim chaplain from Anchorage, Alaska, and he'll be speaking on the topic of the foundation of Muslim and Christian unity. There will also be a beautiful rendition of Amazing Grace performed by Ali Abdul Haq, one of our Muslim brothers. And in the, at the, for the credits at the end, um, this was a last minute addition or a change up to the program. There will be a, a beautiful poem that um, talks about Mus unity of Muslims and Christians and our love for the blessed Jesus, son of Mary. And that will be recited by Shazia Abdul Alim. There will also be a video photo essay of interfaith community service programs being conducted across the nation by Muslims and Christians working and praying together. And these video vocals that will be playing in the background will be are performed by the Catskills Children Academy in upstate New York. Before we get started, I'd like to just review a couple uh, ground rules. Please keep your microphone on mute. Also, at some point during this event, we'll queue up uh, will allow you to queue up questions in the chat for our special question and answer session, which will be at the conclusion of the program. All speakers will be live during the Q&A session and we'll select questions from the questions that are submitted to be answered. Thank you and we hope you enjoy the program. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذ قالت يا مريم إن الله يبشرك بكلمة من إن 
الله يبشرك بكلمة منه اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم عيسى بن مريم وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين ويكلم الناس في المهد وكهلا ومن الصالحين قالت رب أنا يكون لي ولد ولم يمسسني بشر قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء إذا قضى ويعلمه الكتاب والحكمة والتوراة والإنجيل ورسولا إلى بني إسرائيل أني قد جئتكم آية من ربكم أني أخلق لكم من الطين كهيئة الطير كهيئة الطير فأنفخ فيه فيكون طيرا بإذن الله وأبرئ الأكمه والأبرص وأحيي الموتى بإذن الله وأنبئ بأنكم بما تأكلون وما تدخرون في بيوتكم إن في ذلك لآية لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين ومصدقا لما بين يدي من التوراة ولأحل لكم بعض الذي حرم عليكم حرم عليكم وجئتكم بآية من ربكم فاتقوا الله واطيعون إن الله ربي وربكم فاعبدوه هذا صراط مستقيم فلم أحس عيسى منهم الكفر قال من أنصاري إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار I'm 
نجد بأننا مسلمون صدق الله العظيم Oh, mashallah. God is great. Thank you, Hafiz Shafiq, for such moving recitation. Next, we have Kamal Shakir, and he will be speaking about what Muslims believe about the blessed Jesus, son of Mary. Good day. I will be speaking today on what Muslims believe about the life and mission of blessed Jesus, son of Mary, the word and spirit of God. In the name of God, whose proper name in Arabic language is Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. La ilaha illallah, Isa ruhu Allah. There is no God but Allah. Jesus is the spirit of God. As a Muslim, I say to all our viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. In this joyous season of the year, the Muslim community of Holy Islamville, York, South Carolina, and the New Awakenings Resource Center of Rock Hill, South Carolina, would like to join our Christian brothers and sisters in commemorating the life of the blessed Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him. However, we wish to show reverence and gratitude to the blessed Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him, in a way that is befitting the noble status bestowed upon he and his blessed mother by God Almighty. In order to do this, though, it is essential that we make aware to our Christian brothers and sisters some salient beliefs that our religion teaches us regarding the noble life and mission of Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon them both. These beliefs are based upon our religious scripture, the Holy Quran, which was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of God be upon him, from God Most High. We believe it is the pure and unchanged word of God Almighty. These beliefs are perhaps not commonly known, or if they are known, they're not fully understood by most Christians. Today, I would like to share some of these beliefs with you and provide a brief explanation of them as God Almighty wills. Make no mistake, my Christian brothers and sisters, there is no other religion in existence today besides Islam in which love, reverence, and respect for Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him, is a core tenet of his faith. The very denial of his miraculous birth, life, nullifies a Muslim's testimony of faith. Indeed, by the sublime words found in the Holy Quran, chapter 355, God Almighty says, When said Allah, Jesus, I will take thee to me, and will raise thee to me, and I will purify thee of the unbelievers, and I will set thy followers above those who reject till doomsday. Having said this, here are some of the teachings regarding Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon them both, that all Muslims must believe and accept. Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him, was born miraculously. Mary, peace be upon her, was a righteous and pure woman who conceived Jesus, peace be upon him, without consorting with a man. Jesus, peace be upon him, showed many miracles, all by the permission of God Almighty. Jesus, peace be upon him, was sent by God Most High as a prophet to the children of Israel. Jesus, peace be upon him, is the Messiah, the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Jesus, peace be upon him, was raised to God Almighty alive and will return to earth. The first point concerning the miraculous birth of Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon both of them. God Almighty says in the Holy Quran, chapter 19, 21, and make mention in the book of Maryam, when she withdrew from her people to an eastern house, then she took a veil apart from them. Then we sent unto her our angel, 
Then he came before her becoming a full man. She said, I seek refuge in the mercy from thee if thou hast fear of God. He said, I am but a messenger sent by the Lord that I may give thee a boy pure. She said, how shall I have a son and no man has touched me? And I was never unchaste. He said, so it is, thy Lord has said, easy is that for me, and we desire to make him a sign for the people and a mercy from us, and it is an affair decreed. Muslims understand from this account in the Holy Quran that Jesus, peace be upon him, was born without the normal process of a woman being impregnated by a man. However, his mother Mary, peace be upon her, did carry him in her womb and did give birth to Jesus, peace be upon him, through normal childbirth. God Almighty explains here also that this is a matter already decreed by him and that the likeness of Jesus' miraculous birth was like that of Prophet Adam, peace be upon him. God Almighty simply commanded, be, and he became. The second point concerning Mary, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon them both, addresses her noble station among all women of the world. God Almighty says in the Holy Quran, chapter 3, 42 and 43. And when the angel said, Mary, God has chosen you and made thee pure and chosen thee above all women of the world. Mary, worship thy Lord and lie prostrate and bow with those who bow. Mary, peace be upon her, was given piety, good conduct and character by God Almighty as a young girl to such an extent that the people bore witness to her excellent morals and they adored her. She often spent time worshiping God Almighty through constant prayer and fasting and was given permission to make congregational prayers with the men. This status was not all traditional for any other woman of her time. When she did give birth to Jesus, peace be upon him, God Most High promised to Mary, peace be upon her, that her infant son would validate her purity and chastity. God Almighty did so by giving Jesus, peace be upon him, the power to speak to the people as an infant in the cradle. His miraculous testimony destroyed the lies, insults, and castigation heaped upon his mother by the very people who had recognized her sincere piety and truthfulness before. In the Holy Quran, chapter 3, 46, God Almighty says, And he, Jesus, shall speak to the men in the cradle and in mature age, and is one of the blessed and lucky ones. Muslims believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, was given the power and authority by God Almighty to do many miraculous things, which were beyond the abilities of normal human beings. As God Almighty says in the Holy Quran, chapter 349, Verily, I have come to you with signs from your Lord, that I make for you out of clay the figure of a bird. Then I breathe into it and becomes a flying animal by God's leave. And I heal the blind and the leper and bring the dead to life by God's leave. And I inform you of what you put in your houses. Verily in that there is a full sign for you if you are believers. Indeed, Muslims understand that the miracles Jesus, peace be upon him, showed were all done solely by God's permission as signs to confirm to the children of Israel his divine mission given to him by God Almighty. In the Holy Quran, chapter 3, 48 through 50, God says, and he, God, will teach him, Jesus, the book, the wisdom, the Torah, and the gospel, and will make him messenger unto the children of Israel. And I, Jesus, declare that the book before me, the Torah, is truthful, and for that I may make lawful some of those things which were unlawful unto you. And I have come to you with sign from your Lord, so fear God and obey me. Surely Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him. This is the straight path. No one can understand the divine plan of God Almighty except as he wills. The Holy Quran, the Torah, and the Bible all make mention of the miracles 
of some of his most prominent prophets and the results of those who were their witnesses. Prophet Noah, peace be upon him, built the ark on dry land. All the while, his people ridiculed and disobeyed his commands. God Almighty sent the rain for 40 days and nights and saved the believers and drowned the rebels and the disbelievers. One of the greatest signs shown by Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, was the parting of the Red Sea, which the children of Israel witnessed. God Almighty calmed the parted waters to allow them to pass safely and then drown Pharaoh and his armies when they pursued them on that very same path. Yet, the unbelievers amongst the children of Israel chose to make a golden calf, worship it in defiance of the commands of Moses, peace be upon him, and the miracle they had just witnessed. They were destroyed, and only those who believed in the teachings and followed the commands of Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, were saved. So too was the case with Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him. The majority of the people of his time placed more emphasis on his unique birth and miracles, and little to no time following his teachings, his lifestyle, and obeying his commandments. As a result, three main interpretations developed regarding Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him. There are those who deny his very existence. There are those who worship or deify him. And there are those who love, follow, and obey him. As Muslims, we are taught that Jesus, peace be upon him, receives a unique nearness to God Almighty. He is known as the Messiah, the Word of God, and the Spirit of God. In the Holy Quran, chapter 5, 171, God Most High says, The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, is but the messenger of God and his word that he brought to Mary and a spirit from him. So believe in God and his messengers. The scholars and teachers of Holy Quran have explained the religious scriptures to help Muslims understand the meaning of God's noble words. Some scholars say that the word Messiah, which was a Hebrew word meaning blessed, and the corresponding Arabic word in the Holy Quran, Masihu, has a similar meaning. Hebrew and Arabic are called Semitic languages, and as a result, there are many words that are similar in meaning, and when translated, transliterated, in our case into English, they are spelled and pronounced slightly different. Additionally, Masihu used in a Holy Quran Arabic text, as we are taught, is used specifically to denote that Jesus, peace be upon him, had no father and was to be known in reference to his mother. Jesus, peace be upon him, was called the word of God because God Almighty gave the word be and Jesus, peace be upon him, came into worldly existence through what many call supernatural means. God Almighty explains the reality of his word be in giving us the example of Prophet Adam's birth, peace be upon him, for he had no father or mother. God Almighty says in the Holy Quran, chapter 359, truly the likeness of Jesus before God is Adam's likeness. He, God, made him of dust and said unto him, be, and he was. And lastly, Jesus, peace be upon him, is referred to as a spirit from God. From this, Muslims are taught that God Almighty breathed a spirit from his self through the angel Gabriel into Mary, peace be upon her. Hence, Jesus, peace be upon him, was a mirror which reflected the divine spirit of God Almighty. But Jesus himself was not God. We all know that a mirror will reflect an image, but that image is not to be construed as equal to or the same as the object is reflecting. Muslims must believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, will be raised up alive to God Almighty, and that he will return to live as one who follows the laws of God Most High and will die a normal death. About this, God Almighty says in the Holy Quran, chapter 4, 158 and 159, Indeed, God raised him, Jesus, to him, God, and God is the Almighty, all-wise. 
There is not a single section of the people of the book, but that will certainly believe in Jesus before his death. On the day of resurrection, he, Jesus, will be a witness against them. God Most High also says in the Holy Quran, chapter 43, 61, and he, Jesus, is the sign of the hour, so be not doubtful about it, and accept my word. This is a straight path. When we put all the above-mentioned scriptures together, narrated by God Most High in the Holy Quran, we have a clear and consistent picture of who blessed Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon them both, was as well as what he taught. Jesus, peace be upon him, explained to the children of Israel through his teachings and his lifestyle to worship God who is one and follow his example, which was to say follow God's commandments. In the Torah, the book brought by prophet Moses, peace be upon him, we find the well-known Ten Commandments. The first commandment of God proclaims to the children of Israel when he says, Thou shalt not take no gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for the Lord thy God is a jealous God. This commandment was taught and obeyed by all the prophets of God Almighty, including blessed Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him, despite the uniqueness of his birth, his life on earth, and his being lifted alive to God most high. Jesus, peace be upon him, was sent by God Almighty to bring the children of Israel back to the correct practices of the faithful, which they had once again strayed far from. Muslims recognize that there are notable differences between Christ our Christian brothers and sisters regarding the nature and the teachings of Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him. But likewise, we have many similar beliefs. And it is on these that the Muslim community of Holy Islamville, York, South Carolina, and the New Awakenings Resource Center of Rock Hill, South Carolina, wishes to join with our Christian brothers and sisters to do the works at Jesus, peace be upon him, would have us do. That is to help the poor, the needy, the children, the elderly, and the disabled. Let us come together, give thanks to God Almighty with joy, love, respect, and pensive reflection, and commemorate the birth and life of the blessed Jesus, Son of Mary, the Messiah, the Word of God, and the Spirit of God, peace be upon him and his mother. To all I say, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you, and may God Almighty guide and protect you and your family. Thank you, Brother Kamal Shakir, for sharing with us the love and reverence with which Muslims give the blessed Jesus, Son of Mary, respect. And now, if you'll just sit back and enjoy this soulful rendition of Amazing Grace, performed by Brother Ali Abdul Haq. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we already have come. Twas grace hath brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. Amazing grace. 
How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found. Was blind, but now I see. Indeed, what a moving performance. Thank you, Brother Ali Abdul Haq. And now, New Awakenings is pleased to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Jawaria Abdullah Shaheed, education consultant and interfaith speaker, as she presents the noble character of Jesus and how we may incorporate his way into our daily lives. Thank you and enjoy. I greet you in the name of Almighty God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Today, I take pleasure in speaking to you all about the inspiring qualities and characteristics of Jesus, Son of Mary, peace be upon him. The Holy Quran mentions Isa bin Maryam, otherwise known as Jesus, Son of Mary, approximately 25 times. It confirms that he was born from a virgin birth, that he performed miracles, revised, revived the dead, and most importantly, taught monotheism. My focus is on Jesus as a Sufi master and spiritual extraordinaire, and how we can utilize his example to transform the lives of ordinary people. As a point of clarification, when talking about Jesus being a Sufi master, we are talking about the practice of Sufis who are committed to ridding oneself of bad deeds and ill manners with the intention of developing moral qualities. Essentially, annihilation of ego so that the essence of the Almighty can be experienced. The goal of the Sufi is to become annihilated in God. Worldly plans and desires are rendered meaningless. Every action and effort are supported through the remembrance of the Creator. The awesome reality of Jesus was verified by the virgin birth. Him being a Sufi master is rooted in his spirituality and self-purification as practice in his daily life. His miraculous manifestations that allowed him to cure lepers and blow life into dead birds is firmly implanted in his annihilation of the Supreme Lord who granted him auspicious and mind-blowing abilities to heal man and increase the faith of humanity. Jesus preached monotheism and that love transcends all. He is a spiritual revolutionary and master of spiritual sciences. His spiritual impact is far reaching and continues up and through today. One of his titles is Ruhullah, which means the spirit of the almighty creator. It is in this spirit that I would like to say a few words about the practicality of faith and spirituality in the context of love, life, and learning from Jesus, son of Mary. In this time of COVID-19, where hundreds of thousands have lost their lives globally, loved ones are in mourning and hopelessness abounds, words from the gospel have the ability to soothe, comfort, and heal. Barnabas, an apostle of Jesus the Nazarene, penned the gospel that has been eloquently preserved. The Gospel of Barnabas includes examples of Jesus, son of Mary's strong relationship with the Lord. Jesus proclaimed, Thou knowest, Lord, that I, thy servant, seek thee alone. O Lord, and speak thy word, for thy word is truth, which endureth forever. Jesus was always seeking God. This seeking is an unceasing effort to please the Creator. His doing so allowed him to forsake worldly desires 
and demonstrates to others the true riches and wealth derived from being devoted to Almighty God. As those who love Jesus and understand his actions are prophetic traditions with immense value, whose currency never degrades, we can implement the simplicity of his examples to improve our lives and the lives of those around us. Both Christians and Muslims believe Jesus embodies love and possesses qualities of healing and miraculous manifestations. So how do we utilize the extra extraordinariness of spiritual fulfillment to transform ourselves, our communities, and humanity at large? We become like Jesus by committing to the spiritual journey that must be taken. We acknowledge that the human soul must go through a spiritual transformation. And for this to happen, we must actively reduce and remove worldly desires and goals. The drive to have more, buy more, use more must be cast away. The sacred reality of man is illustrated through the submission and annihilation in the almighty creator. Although the realities of the 21st century loom with artificial intelligence, surveillance culture, and a thriving capitalist system that makes our daily existence quite complex, perhaps now more than ever, spiritual development is needed to combat these forces. Adherence to the Ten Commandments is a practical step towards submission to our Lord and alignment with Jesus, son of Mary's code of ethics. Possessing redemptive qualities, seeking forgiveness from the almighty creator for our sins is quintessential to working to become a better man or woman. These endeavors may seem small, but the possibility of their impact is expansive. It is my hope that intellectual capital as regard Jesus, son of Mary, is transformed into praxis of what he symbolizes and has taught. Once this happens, we are then able to move from a space of religious or spiritual history to a place of transformative practice that results in becoming closer to the almighty creator. A journey of inner realization that leads us to surrender to our Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Juaria, for such thought-provoking words. Please enjoy the following photo essay of the Muslims and Christians who ask themselves daily, what would Jesus do? And then try to emulate his ways while serving God's creation. The vocals in this video are provided by the Catskills Children Academy. Thank you. When we join together like this, it shows what love is all about. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will be part tomorrow. Don't let peace slip through your hands. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will be part tomorrow. Don't let peace slip through your hands. Almighty, we shall overcome.
We tie together our love for blessed Jesus and the good works that we do in the name of God. Let's lend our ears to Brother Shoaib Ahmed, Muslim chaplain from Anchorage, Alaska, as he presents the founding of Muslim and Christian unity. Thanks and enjoy. Greetings to all and peace to those who follow the divine guidance. Season's greetings. As we Muslims join hands with our Christian brethren to celebrate the blessed birth and life of Jesus, the son of Mary, peace and blessings be upon him. And we declare that the holy last messenger of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and the second last messenger of Islam, Jesus, son of Mary, are two aspects of the same and one reality, the Tawheed or oneness of Allah, the one almighty God. In the Holy Quran, Allah, the Most High, calls upon the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, in the third chapter, the 64th ayat, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أهل الكتاب تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم ألا ألا نعبد إلا الله ولا نشرك به شيء ولا يتخذ ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله فإن تولوا فقولوا اشهدوا بأننا مسلمون الله سبحانه وتعالى says he tells us to say, O oh, people of the book, let us come to a word common between us and you, that we worship none but Allah, and that we associate none with him, and that we will not set up one another lords besides him. If they refuse, then say, bear witness that we are Muslims, those who submit to the will of Allah. The foundation of Muslim Christian unity is based on the common belief in the one Almighty God and the common adherence to the Ten Commandments. In the New Testament, Mark 12, 29, Jesus replied, The most important commandment is this, Listen, O Israel, the Lord Jehovah, your God, is one God. And the Holy Quran declares in the second surah, 163rd ayat, Wa ilahukum ilahun wahid, la ilaha illa huwa rahmanu rahim. And your God is one God. There is no God but He, the most gracious, the most merciful. Throughout history, from the beginning of Islam, Muslims and Christians have enjoyed good relations. There is the famous story of the Christian king of Abyssinia, whose name was Najashi which is now modern-day Ethiopia. This is known as the first hijra, or the first migration of the Muslims, 
when the followers of the Holy Last Messenger, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, after being persecuted in Mecca for their belief in the one almighty God, Allah, the followers were sent by the Holy Last Messenger, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to the land of a righteous king, where they would seek religious freedom. Their Arab persecutors pursued them to Abyssinia and tried to convince the king to hand the Muslims over and return them to Mecca. The Muslims explained their case, how they had rejected idol worship and chose faith in the one almighty God, Allah. When the idol worshippers highlighted that Muslims do not view Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, as the Son of God, at that time, Hazrat Jafar ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, recited from Surah Maryam, which is a chapter in the Holy Quran, named after the Blessed Mother of Jesus, Mary, which explains the miraculous virgin birth of Jesus, son of Mary. When the king Najashi heard and understood the Muslims' belief, he began to weep, and he drew a line in the sand and said, The difference between your faith and mine is no thicker than this line. The king declared that the Muslims would live safely in his kingdom, and later on, that king accepted Islam and became Muslim. Peaceful relations between Muslims and Christians is crucial to world peace. If Muslims and Christians come together on the common grounds of faith and belief in the one Almighty God, and we resolve to live by the Ten Commandments at the, as the basis for social order and well-being, then this world will become a better place for all people. As Muslims, we look forward to the days when Muslims and Christians will join hands and come together for the love of Almighty God and love for both Jesus the son of Mary, and the holy last messenger, Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. And I'd like, to, I'd like to close with a tradition where the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was asked about Jesus. He replied, he is my brother. We have the same father, but different mothers. So this underscores and highlights the relationship between true Muslims and true Christians, those who have love for God and love for his holy messengers. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Shoaib, for enlightening us on our history with our beloved Christian brothers and sisters. And now I'm very excited because it's time for the live Q&A session. I'd like to ask the speakers to, at this time, um, unmute your mics and come on camera, turn on your camera so that we can begin the live session. I'd like to remind the audience, please keep your microphone on mute and type your questions in the chat. So the New Awakenings Resource Center and the United Muslim Christian Forum, Alaska chapter, has been uh, working annually on interfaith activities such as the National Day of Prayer, the National Harmony Week, and this is an event where uh, members of each local interfaith, interfaith groups who are, a mem who are members of the local chapters come okay. together and each group hosts an event or some small uh, gathering each day of that week. And there's also a feeding of the homeless teenagers and interfaith dialogue seminars. This is just to name a few of the things that are going on. Um, there's a lot more coming. 
we'd like for you to um, check out our website. Um, it's, it should be in the, in the end credits. It's www.newawakeningsresourcecenter.org for all of the things that we've been doing, that we're doing and will be doing in the, in the very near future. And with that, we'll start the live Q&A session. I'm gonna go and check and see if we have any questions queued up. All right, I don't see any questions just yet. Don't be shy, everyone. Do we have our speakers queued up? Let's see. Okay, so while we wait for questions in the live, we have some questions that were um, asked in advance via email. And so we'd like to go ahead and get started with those while we wait for questions in the chat. And so the first question comes from one of our Christian sisters and it's, she asked, I am not familiar with the book of Barnabas. Who is he in the life of Jesus, son of Mary? One of my panelists answer. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so um, I know that um, in the book of Acts, uh, Barnabas is spoken about very prominently in the New Testament. And, um, you know, in, in that story is, is when uh, Paul, um, who the Christians call Apostle Paul, uh, was supposed to have, ha he had an event where he was uh, struck blind and he heard a voice saying to go and and, and preach the gospel. So he went to um, seek out the disciples. And um, when, when he came to the disciples, the disciples were afraid of him because they knew him to be a person who persecuted and even killed Christians. But the Bible says that, and Barnabas took him in. So the Bar Barnabas was the, was the elder disciple. And um, he was actually uh, the one who took Paul in and then um, it goes on to tell the stories um, of how um, actually Barnabas, of course, preached the monotheism and um, the dispute between Barnabas and Paul came when Paul began to um, expose the Trinity uh, idea more than the, the Unitarian view of God. And so the Gospel of Barnabas is in print and circulation in modern times. And uh, that, um, as far as I know from a Muslim scholars, that it is uh, the most uh, widely accepted um, uh, book of, um, of the Christian theology uh, by Muslim scholars. Thank you, Brother Shui. So I have another question here that was emailed uh, ahead of time. This is also from another one of our Christian sisters who's looking deeply into the tenets of Islam. And, you know, since, you know, she's done a lot of research and she's found that Islam compares very, very closely to Christianity and she's searching, she's searching for the truth. So. She asks, how does a person who is reverting to Islam deal with his or her loved ones, particularly 
a spouse or, or husband or wife once reversion has been undertaken. So once she reverts to Islam, what happens to her marriage, to her husband, if he doesn't choose to refer to Islam with her? How is that directed towards? Anyone can answer. I see Dr. Jaweria is on. I also see um, yourself. I'm not, I, I think our brother Kamal Shakir, he had some technical difficulties, so he wasn't able to join. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so is the question after the person, the lady is asking after she becomes Muslim, what happens yes. to her marriage to her um, non-Muslim husband? Is that correct? Is that the question? That is correct. That is correct. I think she was more asking, can she stay married to her husband if she reverts to Islam and he chooses not to revert to Islam? Should she, how should she treat her loved ones, her relatives? I think that well, was the context of the question. <clears throat> Well, treating her relatives, of course, would still be done um, with love and kindness and also sharing uh, her newfound belief in spiritual development and trying to uh, encourage them in that regard. Um, as far as if she actually, you know, takes shahada or does the testification that there is only one Lord uh, and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger, um, then after that, I believe there would be some Islamic technicalities as uh, Muslim women uh, do not marry non-Muslim men because it's a situation of reversion um, and her uh, converting to Islam as a religion and way of life, um, then the scholars would have to explain a little bit more in that regard. And I'm sorry, um, I actually have been looking at the chat uh, because someone did type uh, a question in there who asked, who sired uh, Jesus, who fathered um, Jesus? And according to Islam, um, Jesus was born pure. He was born from the Virgin Mary, uh, peace be upon her. And, and We may have lost um, Dr. Jawaria. Okay, can you hear me? Can yeah, hear I can me hear you. Yeah. Okay, so um, okay, so the question is, who fathered Jesus? If 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 uh, and it's, it's a very common question amongst Christians, who fathered Jesus? If if God is not his father, but um, of course the Holy Quran says that the likeness of Jesus is as the likeness of Adam. Allah created him from dust. He said be and he was because God created Adam without father or mother. And so mm -hmm. um, that creation in itself is, is even, even maybe considered more miraculous by some people. But um, in uh, another, another thing I'd like to point out um, from the Holy Quran and uh, from the Bible as well, I do believe that um, Hazrat Zakaria um, prayed to Allah that um, and he and his wife uh, have children and Allah uh, caused her to also have um, a child. But um, the, 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 the point is that by Allah's word, Jesus is known as the word of Allah. And so um, Jesus was, was conceived by the word of Allah, kun fayakun. Thank you for that, Brother Shway. Hopefully that assuages the concern of the participant. There's one more question from the chat. 
Uh, I would like to know, so Aisha asks, I would like to know Paul's position in Christianity and was he considered a true disciple? There is a big discrepancy with some Christians on the message Paul brought. Either of our uh, speakers can answer that question, please. Okay, I, I may be the only one online now uh, from what I can tell. Is anyone else on? Yeah, I don't see Dr. Jaweria anymore, so it might just be you, Brother Shoy. Okay, so um, um, from from what I've studied, and 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 I do believe it's um, you know consensus amongst Christians as well that Paul himself was not one of the disciples, and uh, like I said before, even in the Book of Acts. Um, the New Testament, it says that Paul later joined the disciples. So he never met Jesus and he never studied under Jesus. And mm. so, but the question is, what is Paul's uh, role in Christianity? Is that the question? That's the first part of the question. It looks like they're, it's a multi-part question. Yeah, so Paul is the, um, he is the author of the Trinitarian um, doctrine within Christianity. And, um, you know, when we, when we study uh, Christian history, we see that uh, the Unitarian doctrine, which, is, which was uh, definitely uh, promoted by Barnabas, uh, was, the, was the first doctrine of Christianity. And the Pauline doctrine, which began to deify uh, Jesus and even incorporated some uh, Roman um, tradition into Christianity uh, began to take root and was adopted by the uh, Christian or the pagan king, Constantine, uh, after the Council of Nicaea in 325 um, Christian era. So uh, we see that even, even amongst Christianity and even today amongst different denominations, there is um, still dispute about exactly um, you know, the, the Unitarian doctrine or the Trinitarian doctrine and exactly even the definition and, and, um, uh, and particulars about the Trinity uh, is still under dispute. And that is why Allah sent the Holy Quran as a final revelation, the final testament to clarify um, the fact of his unity, the messengerhood of uh, Jesus, son of Mary, and the final finality of prophethood of the holy last messenger Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Great answer. Okay, so with that, I don't see any more questions in the chat. We're gonna that will bring the uh, event to a close. Before everyone leaves, um, I'd just like to remind you and thank you for joining and also remind you to go to the New Awakenings Resource Center website. It'll be in the end credits, you'll see that. It's www.newawakeningsresourcecenter.org and hope you have a blessed rest of the evening. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace be with you. Oh, Jesus, son of Mary, your lovers are united in celebrating your birth by commemorating your life and work. Oh, Jesus, son of Mary, your lovers are united in celebrating your birth by commemorating your life and works. Your blessed mother was informed by angel Gabriel that you'd be born, that she'd give birth to you, a son, and God's will will always be done. With a breath, the infant came, and Mary carried him in her hands. When the people asked, Oh, Mary, what is this? Honor Jesus, you were the witness. To strengthen your divine mission, performing miracles by God's permission. You healed the lepers and raised the dead, 
Thousands ate from a few loaves of bread. Your gospel, the good news, and jeal, foretold the coming of the seal, who shall be known as Ahmed, the comforter, the very final messenger. O Jesus, son of Mary, your lovers are united in celebrating your birth by commemorating your life and works. We are eagerly awaiting the time of your arrival, O breath of the divine.